Hello all and welcome to another Caffeinated Entertainment video. This is the book review for Book 10 of the Wheel of Time series, The Crossroads of Twilight by Robert Jordan. Oh, where do I begin with this book? If For those who don't know, in the non-spoiler part of this video, by the way, spoiler, 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 excuse me, that's scratch scratching there, it happens. Um, spoilers, spoilers, spoilers will be coming for this um book because I have to talk about this book so it's more of a book discussion for those who have read it uh, but The Wheel of Time follows Rand Althor it follows Egwene Alvira Matron Coffin and Perrin Abara those are our four heroes Rand Althor being the chosen one uh, but it follows those four now this is book 10 I of the World is book one, book two is the Great Hunt, book three is the Dragon Reborn, book four is the Shadow Rising, five the Fires of Heaven, six the Lord of Chaos, seven a Crown of Swords, eight a Path of Daggers, nine Winter's Heart, book ten is right here across Order of Twilight, book eleven Night for Dreams, book twelve the Gathering Storm. Uh, I don't remember book 13's title, but book 14 is uh, A Memory of Light. Uh, and there are 14 or 15 books in this series, depending on how you see things. Uh, book 15 would be A New Spring. That's the prequel to book 1. It comes before The Eye of the World. But here we go with the spoilery content. Um... So, spoiler, 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 if you haven't read this book, go away now. If you don't mind being spoiled and want to watch the end of, end of the video, um, go ahead. Um, this book, like, this book series has a lot of love for it. It's epic, but it's epically slow. There are points in this book where people talk about doing things, but they don't do them. They say, well, if he does this then I'll do that. If they do this, then I'll respond like this. And there's a point in this book, I kid you not, where Jordan uh, describes a door or a gate, a wooden gate to a city and describes it in such great detail that it went on for seven pages, people. It was god awful. It talked about every notch, how it was... I mean, this book was... In the parts where it picked up near the end, every time there was action, it was good and it flowed well. Every time it slowed down, it was a slog to get through. You had to trudge to get through it. I don't think that this was the right book to start off Tome Topple because it put me in kind of the reading slowdown I'm in now. Um, I do intend to continue with the series, but... There's plenty more, which I'll go into, like, um, you don't know, there's one sequence where I didn't, I didn't understand, it wasn't made clear whether one of the characters was sleeping or walking around or dreaming. I couldn't tell, and when you can't tell, when you're lost in an epic fantasy novel, you've done something wrong. Plain and simple, you've done something wrong. <sighs> The parts that were good were the battle, and the most of your Randolph Althor parts were good. Most of your Perrin parts were good because there was some movement. Your Egwene parts were slow as hell. Your Matron Coffin parts were stupid. Uh, this book, it it could have been. It's a thousand sixty-seven pages. And it could have been about 500 pages and been just fine. I think the fact that Jordan's wife was his editor played to a disservice to him as she must have thought at some point that he, what he wrote was awesome and she could have cut down descriptions and babbly talk. I mean, there's one point where Jordan even explains to give an example of description, Jordan even explains uh, the flow of the Aes Sedai's dress. 
like how it flowed when she moved and it's like I don't need seven, six pages of that crap I mean come on now like I do think the book was decent and I do think I'll continue on with the series because I'm so close to the end but all I gotta say is the books have to get better from here the first three books were top notch the, uh, the Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, and The Dragon Reborn like they moved and moved and moved Book 10 here, somebody pumped the brakes on this series because it didn't move at all. Uh, I don't know how else to say it, but I give um, Crossroads of Twilight a 2.5 out of 5 stars. For the purposes of good reason, in case anybody's checking, I'm going to go ahead and bump it up to 3, but it's really good 2.5. It's not, it's not worth it. It was okay at best. It was a slog to get through at times. It was, and the times when it flowed, it didn't flow very often. And when it flowed, it got past the flow part and came to a screeching halt. It was like, it was like parts of this book were like driving through the fast lane on the road. And parts uh, of this book was like being stopped by a 500 car pileup. Like being stuck behind a 500 car pileup and waiting for the road crews to clear the accident. I mean, it was it was god awful. I don't know how else to explain it. I don't know how else to put it. Uh, do I recommend the series? Yes, because it's epic fantasy. But realize that some epic fantasy has <laughs> like long ep long epic fantasy series tend to suffer from middle book slowdown, and I totally think that's what this is. I hope the ending is just as good as the beginning. At least that's what I hope. And... You know what? Let's start a discussion. Down in the comments below, let me know if you've read Crossroads Twilight, book 10 of the Wheel of Time. If you have, let me know what you thought. If you haven't, uh, let me know if you're interested. I do recommend the series. Just know that this series is not perfect. Uh, but w let's have a discussion down below. Was there ever a book series that was long for you um, that slowed in the middle and hopefully either picked up or maybe didn't pick up? So leave those comments down below. Leave a like. Um, subscribe. Share. Do all that jazz, and I'll see you all on the next video. Happy reading to everyone. Hope you read something better than me this time.